I'm good. And uh, just to clarify, it's actually Joshua Fabia, and uh, <clears throat> I'm his coach, trainer, manager. You know, I'm the I'm the physical therapist. I'm the nutritionist. I'm doing all those jobs of which you see a whole lot of people have full occupational titles for. It's it's much bigger than than just saying like how most of the media has already done me saying corner and confusing people. So I'd like to clarify, I'm doing all of that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if, uh, if you ask Diego, he's going to tell the story that we just told Ariel Awani's show, which is how we met. Uh, if you're asking me, the truth is I'm only here because Jackson Wink didn't do their damn job. All right. Uh, the truth is, Diego had been not evolving or able to develop in any new way uh, through that space due to no one giving him any time, energy, or actual training. So that's, that's actually an interesting subject. We've got to kind of cover that. Most people assume training means I went to the gym or I went to a class. That's not training. That's not specific training and guidance to get you to a specific goal. That's just practice. Yeah, exactly. So all of that stuff that you're seeing happen right now in the segmented fight game, they're mostly classes, right? Go to Muay Thai class. Go to this. Go to that. Who's taking the person apart and analyzing what's really going on and giving that proper attention that was not happening. And it doesn't happen to anybody over there. I'll be honest with you. And that's, that's the truth. Even John Jones is not being broke down that way. No, absolutely not. He's getting assistance in every direction he wants because he's John Jones. He's getting people surrounding him, uh, you know, moving and doing the things that he needs and wants done. Right. Not a lot of people are <clears throat> pushing him past his comfortable thresholds. I mean, that's just the truth. So this is how training really works, okay? In, in real life, in any capacity, uh, a trainer's job is to be able to properly, efficiently, and safely get you to do more than what you would do on your own. And so there's a level if I tell you to do 10 push-ups, you do 10 push-ups. Tell me what's going to happen with the body. How long is it going to take before it plateaus? It's going to plateau very quickly. But if I tell you to do push-ups and I don't give you a time, I don't give you a number, all of a sudden, now we're training. Once we go past the place of where you would have normally stopped is where real work is being done. Any real competent trainer knows that. If you don't realize that, you're just beating people up and hurting them with, with very, you know, light ignorance to what you're doing, but, but you're definitely not taking any liability for what you're doing. Context, if we're talking about Jackson Winks, you, you know, I'm not trying to be a dick, and I'm not, I just want to, you know, pointing out awareness, is, it, it's painful to the people that were not able to see it. Hold, hold on just a second. Hey. So what's happening is uh, you have a man that has had an injury and uh, there, there, there's a space on the face that is not functioning. How many more people from that space have eye injuries? I mean, do you think it's coincidental? Is nobody putting one and two together that maybe the defense work isn't so great? Like, honestly, why is nobody using their awareness to recognize that Diego built that gym? Nobody would have known about Greg Jackson unless Diego took him to the UFC. That when Greg Jackson's was the phenomenally known place of training, it was when a bunch of other athletes already made, already created, already vetted professional athletes – came to come train with a group of men, 
not to just say, hey, I need you to train me. And then they came and they gone. But tell me how Greg Jackson gets credit for their lifelong legacies, as if that went through there that he's gotten credit for. Did he actually train, man? He just ran classes like, like it's real. But that's the point of if you study and know what I actually do and go to the website, school of self awareness worldwide.com, you would know that what I teach is a method that teaches you how to have an unlimited amount of energy and to understand your body to the level of becoming nobody, K N O W, when you know that you are not your body, giving you the ability to be anybody. Hold on, we have a lawyer. What are you, what are you talking about? Who's absolutely, absolutely. And having how many? It's 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 not a normal thing to have multiple people look it over. Well, what? Yeah, I'm the sole manager. Doesn't mean that we don't have a lawyer. We have a lawyer to look over everything. I mean, come on, that's that's how life, professional life is. Joey Joey Gilbert, a former professional boxer, is is our lawyer. If you, uh, but yeah, and, and, and we have a couple other lawyers, to be honest with you, for other things. But nevertheless, I mean, I don't see how the assumption would be – you see what I'm saying? Well, the capacity of the manager means that I am managing affairs. I am managing what's happening in the life of Diego and his, you know, livelihood in the sense of – keeping his well-being at at highest level possible, giving him the highest quality uh, of life available to expand and give him higher value, opening up his brand and market, you know, the things that a manager is supposed to do, and all those supports and all that other stuff, you know, like the juggling of a schedule and and being that person to middle and help, help him deal with the bombardment of which this industry supplies to confuse and rattle a person, you see? Well, here, I'll let him answer that. Will you please um, just ask him the question? Well, it should not concern people because, first of all, it is my career my life and health that is on the line and therefore it is my decision to go in there with whoever I want. If I want to go in with no one, I'll go in with no one. If I want to go in with one corner man, one trainer, one advisor, when I only need one, Josh provides everything that I need in there. Therefore, I do not need two other men that are there to live their moment in the limelight. I have a strong connection, and those are the only only words that I should be hearing are the ones from Joshua. For I have put him in this position of counsel and advisory. Now, now... Looking at it from the witness's view and what it would look like not knowing or understanding, not having the awareness to know who, what, and and, and how Joshua is the sole trainer is like a lot of things in my career. They're the first in the UFC. All right, maybe the last in the UFC. I've been making history for a long time, and I told everybody from the beginning how special Joshua was that in our first meeting, I went 80% with him on the concrete, and he's 135 pounds. He's 5'2". All right, I went full speed. 80% while I was in training camp in shape and he took my back. I switched out of it on the concrete and uh, me, I had to let go because it could face plant on the concrete Hmm. and he trapped my arm in a move. 
that we that we called J, and uh, my arm was trapped. And he, if he wanted to, he would he could have easily snapped my bone right out of socket. And um, I said, I stopped, I tapped, and I said, "Hold on, just show me that one move." And that was the start of, of me meeting him. So me being the professional that I am to get checked in chess with the mind and the body in in a moment, blink of an eye, yes, I knew I was dealing with someone very special. And uh, what my trainer has done in his life is different than most of the the trainers out there and what he's what he's experienced is his experience and he was used on a different combative field than the UFC or mixed martial arts but where his skills were needed they were needed in real life shit and um, so when it comes to how he's taught me True combative moves, how he, that are our life and life uh, survival techniques. Whether he's taught me how to get out of the way of a punch by teaching me with a knife. Yes, we we use unorthodox and creatively genius format to what we do. I didn't know there was a necessary qualification. That's the first thing that I'd say. I'd say that looking around at what I've seen. Unless it's a, a fighter, I don't know why I'm being so ridiculed. Nobody's saying how how much ability I have. I'm I'm 38 years old. I'm older than Diego. Why has nobody looked up my abilities? Just because I didn't rub you guys' noses in it and tell you about it doesn't mean I don't have them. It's 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 out there on video. You can go see me moving with. With real people, lot like this is what I mean is there's no papers to justify real. Do you understand? And there's no like I need to say I've done this or that. That's the beauty of being a real, genuine human being. A human being can do anything. You're not seeing how much I can do. You're not seeing all that. It's pretty big, you know, thing. Take a minute. Go look at my website. Go look at how much I've done around the world. And like I say, this is not a 503. I'm not getting any, like, help. I do this out of, you know, come on. You guys have uh, attacked the guy that's dedicated to help not only Diego because he needed help because he wasn't getting it. I don't train fighters. I'm not trying to deal with just warriors. I don't deal with a singular market, man. I live in one world. I'm part of one tribe, and because I was raised by the world, I support the world, which means that I support and created something that is viable from everyone that starts living from the moment of birth to the day you die. Everything that I teach is applicable through your whole life, not just a moment. And that means even when I teach you how to throw a strike, it is a powerful movement that you carry through your life not just one space. And this is what, if you take a minute and look at the body of work of which I have been a part of, and like I said, it sounds crazy that people are like, oh, he's just a, you know, Diego's just a believer. It's a little rude and insulting to say that to all the governments and militaries and law enforcements around the world, not to mention Olympic athletes, professional teams. Like, you don't know who you're really talking about. And you might want to slow it down, do a little research, maybe talk to some people, because I've been the guy that's been supporting people. Well, I mean, singularly from that night, I would say, why is my cornering such a big deal, and why is it in question? Does it seem like after he comes out to start out, he just gets beat up? Has he just lost is nobody seeing that in the last three fights, the first one that I'm involved in is the best fight he's had in 10 years. Nobody wants to acknowledge and give me credit for that. No public media says anything, but if I'm obviously the only thing new, 
it might be that. Okay, then we go up against Kiesa. You guys want to rag me out on Kiesa, but Kiesa is a bad motherfucker. I don't know why everybody's dogging Kiesa. You guys didn't dog Jackson Wink when, when he, he tapped the uh, condit in like a minute something, right? Like, have some respect. And nobody's dogging RDA's coach. Now, Diego did better than RDA, and nobody's saying that. And h- how do I even know? Because on top of it, Kiesa had a broken nose with RDA. And Kiesa couldn't lose to the, to the voodoo coach, you know? And so he put all that pressure on him, and he's taken badass training at the UFCPI. Forrest Griffith and all these guys are all helping him. All against just little old me, and nobody's saying, wow, it's kind of amazing that Diego survived that, didn't get tapped, broke loose four, five, six times, created scrambles, did this. But, you know, if i got to break down the video and show you what's really going on, I will. But if, if the analysts of the sport and the, and, and the ones that are creating the fans' awareness are not aware to know what they're seeing, that it's pretty remarkable a guy that normally suffers wild damage every fight, you know, everybody's getting confused again in the promos for this fight. Everybody's showing Diego when he's 25. He's a 38-year-old man. Guess what? Times have changed, and that style would have got him knocked the fuck out like poor Askren. Shout out to Askren, man, and your family. Sorry about all that happens when you make a mistake and try to grapple a guy that doesn't want to grapple. How come nobody's saying Pieta didn't want to grapple, didn't want to engage, also jumped away, didn't stay in the pocket? Why is nobody saying that Diego, uh, you know, like, if, if you go to Diego's IG, you will see the video of the fight broke down in slow motion. You will see how fraudulent this whole thing is, that Cormier is talking shit about Diego like he's out 50 seconds in, man. 50 seconds in. And if, and if Diego was taking so much damage, tell me, my friend, as a spectator, as a fight fan, why wasn't Diego slowing down? So hurt. If he was, if he was, if he was, oh, he takes any more of those kicks, he's going down. Really? Well, first and foremost, you can think you can tell an athlete what to do in the pressure of a moment. But if you've created the athlete to properly think and be aware enough, you don't need to tell them those specifics. They know them. How dare I tell Diego what specifically in that context of speed, of unpredictability, what to do? He will have to make that judgment call in the moment as the moment is happening. Just like, and I will give you the critique on this, just like everybody talking that shit about Diego just running at his opponent. Listen, crazies, you guys are kind of like, slow it down and recognize what you're seeing. He was loaded to go do a flying knee. And in that moment, in the speed of that, he recognized it was definitely going to be unhealthy to do that. And he smothered it, had no damage, and, and bounced off. Like, again... If you watch the video on Diego Sanchez's IGTV, you will see he blocks, evades like it's Mayweather level, it's McGregor level. Clearly why even McGregor, the only one with enough fight IQ to see the power in what was really happening there. Also the only person to study movement outside of the box of the MMA, I know everything established community. This is what's going on here, man. And on top of it, the criticism truly starts from Joe Rogan's dumbass talking out of turn, slandering somebody, doing malfeasance in the audience eyes and everything because he didn't do his due diligence to find out who I was. Well, you can, he says it during the fight because he, again, doesn't know what I'm talking about when I'm saying 100, meaning Diego needs to get close enough and start to unload his 100 strikes. Not go 100%. Not Tyson is act like Tyson. No, it's code for uppercut hook hook. 
But again, I don't need to tell you my codes, man. I don't need to tell you my business. And Diego doesn't when he's trying to shock and awe the world, which is obviously working, which Again, nobody's giving credit to that. In the poison campaign of I'm a shitty corner man, it's coming from the initial. Then Joe Rogan's ass makes a fucking slander video, pulls up something out of context, which now comes back in your face and you look like an idiot because this video that you're trying to make fun of me of, that, that like I said, is a normal it, – it's, it's for regular people to learn how to solo back train, learn how to move to get out of the way, evade, you know, block, be, have your hands in the right position. That's what it's for. It's not for pros to think that this is what I'm doing. You know, come on, out of context. And like I said, there's amazing footage of me. How come Joe Rogan didn't show that? There you go. Hold on. And then obligating a UFC fighter in front of him who's just happy to have a little awesome media time, obligated to make jokes and laugh back. You know, kind of like these commentators copying Joe Rogan's commentation style, trying to fill gaps with jokes, man. Commentate. Say what's happening. Nobody's asking for your opinion. If you were to go shoot Cormier, you'd be knocked the fuck out. So quit saying, like acting like anybody can just shoot in and take a leg. Anybody can do this. It's so easy. What are you guys talking about? Have you ever tried to wrestle a guy that doesn't want to wrestle? And did it look, yeah, and did it look like Pieta was staying within range? I mean, if you're not going to call it right, nobody understands what they're seeing. So all the way from the Chiesa fight, I've been dogged. So that's been poisoned in the mindset of the people for a whole year. Then they see me again. No way to wipe that clean. I haven't said a word for a year. And all of a sudden, now that I'm speaking about it, Oh, my God, he's coming at the media. He's calling him out for slandering him. Oh, my God, he's a dick. How come I haven't said anything for a year? I, I gave you all time and space to do the right story, to tell the truth, to show everything. Nobody wanted to do their due diligence a whole fucking year. That now you're calling, and now i got to bring your awareness to it. Now i got to plug my website like an asshole. Now i got to tell you to go look. i got to send you the information. i got to package it up like – why? Why couldn't you go look yourself and, like I said, become aware? Well, first of all, does it look like that's what my business does? Well, yeah, that's Diego's specific mission. And if you're looking at my whole, the whole of my business is so broad and so big because I deal with the human being. I do not deal with a section of the world of which man has created and boxed you into. So because it is the whole, it is hard for you to see. So I will paint the picture, my friend. Imagine a wheel. And with the hub of the wheel, all the spaces of the hub of the wheel are different categories of the things on the menu of life whether it is sports and activity, fitness, this, that, and the other. There's a million forms of language, but ultimately we're kind of trying to talk about the same stuff, right? Okay. Now, what I'm showing you is the depth of most of everything that you're seeing is honestly the depth of the rim. And all of a sudden you have a spoke, and the spoke is now the, the whole book or all available information of that subject, all right? And ultimately, it goes to the center. The center is you. You are the common denominator of all this stuff. And the problem is being attached to the other side of the wheel is why you're riding up and down life cycles of drama. I teach the person how to Move in such a way, so correct for the way that the natural mechanics of the body work, that the efficiencies and simplicities echo in every part of your life. It changes your biorhythm. It gives you a way to understand things and slow down space and time. It is way beyond what your eyes perceive until you try it. It is an experiential learning process. And instead of creating a space where people can be exploited, 
I created it so you do it on your own. So you can do it in the privacy, without ridicule, without judgment. I made it in a language that is available to anyone and everyone. That is what you're looking at on a website. You don't think I'm doing something a little more specific and, and, and taking it to a whole nother level for Diego? You really don't. You, you wouldn't assume that. And you wouldn't assume by taking a look at some of the footage of me working with the people that I'm available to work with that maybe I got some real like skills and abilities here. Like this is no joke. And when Diego's then validating it again, why, why is nobody putting one and two together? How do you know to trust CrossFit? How do you know to trust wrestling? How do you know to trust? And like, like what, what science are you broke, been broke down there? Why are you making me sell myself when obviously people have listened, heard, and followed? Asked me to. I, I've never sold anybody. They've asked me to teach them. Listen, I've been flown around the world at least nine times. I didn't pay for the tickets, man. So I have an ability that maybe if you take a second and notice how small I actually am, how much I'm able to do, and start to reflect on why you can't do most of the shit I can do. <laughs> Maybe then we'll start to be aware that there might be a difference. Maybe I'm doing the right shit. Maybe when I'm 38 and I look 25 and I have tons of injuries and all that, you know, but there's no excuses, man. This is what I'm saying. So when I'm talking about the magic and the mystery and the wonder, it's getting into the space of allowing yourself to understand that there's a lot of stuff you don't really know. And when we start to get inside a space to study that, that's when it becomes understood. But when you don't have a method to take you into the another space like that, when it's all just surface, this is the point. So that's why there is meditations and, and these things. And, and it's a full series of progression. There is science to what I'm doing. The science is the physical movements put your body into natural, proper proportions, allowing the physiology of your body to function at the highest, most efficient, simplest way possible, allowing you to then maximize what you can do with a smaller amount of fuel, leaving a smaller footprint on the world, taking less and doing more. Let me remind you, those pyramids were built by slaves, and none of them ever had any superfoods, supplements, steroids. None of them worked out to do it. No, on the contrary, they didn't have barely anything. So how did they do it? So quit thinking that you need all this other stuff and understand what I'm really showing, man. I'd say typically it's a component of three things, maybe. The first one being a lack of awareness and focus on breathing and moving together in function of the body getting adequate enough oxygen to not fatigue. If, if you move and didn't breathe, the body doesn't have enough oxygen for the movement. And if you continue to move, you're behind on breath. Now we're breathing out of our mouth. Now we're making bad decisions. Now less oxygen's going to the brain. Well, that, you know, that's, that's, you know, some real basic stuff. But if you're worried about doing, you know, power cleans and push-ups and, and drilling, 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 but you haven't sunk in the synchronicity of each movement and each breath up from relax level all the way to the highest extremes and how to manage and bring down the heart rate, within the minimal amount of breaths, that's what that take your five recovery breaths about. Again, this is real science. I don't know why uh, the proof isn't shown there when he's so fresh. How come nobody's saying anything? Again, Cormier is talking shit about him drooling out of his mouth, but doesn't really say, geez, it's pretty obvious Diego's had his nose broke four or five times. Uh, you know, I, I apologize. That's kind of rude. I don't know why I said that being a fighter, it is hard to breathe in and out of your nose out there. A, a normal person, but instead he tried to be cute and funny. And this is what comes from the Joe Rogan shit. And this is what I'm talking about, about poisonous stuff. 
So you poison the minds of the people, and this is why you're asking me these questions instead of asking me the questions that should be asked. Do not like what? Like why is the ref asking Diego anything? If you are, if you look at the rules, it is an automatic DQ, no matter if there's a split, no matter what. You, earlier in the event, there was a DQ. Nobody needed to ask anybody anything. Kid gets knocked out. Boom. No, no ask. Okay. The rule is only a ref or the commissioner can make the call. And that's the call to DQ. That's not the call that the fighter can continue to fight like that. Like, like it's either DQ or not. So, so then you put Diego on the spot. This is a Hall of Famer, an active Hall of Famer. You put him on the spot in a fight that he was supposed to lose. In a spot that he's supposed to lose. And now... In his hometown where he's supposed to be fucking slaughtered. And it's obvious when Cormier is talking the language of the slaughter. And nobody can see the amazing performance that Diego's actually doing fighting this giant that he's supposed to lose to, that nobody wants to fight. Okay. So why, why is the UFC or whomever is requesting this piece of information to push forward in the media the days after the fight – to slander Diego Sanchez's legacy. Not to mention the USADA shit. Not to mention, like, three monsters in a row, man. Can Diego Sanchez get a fair fucking fight? Well, I'll tell you right now. When we were in the warm-up room with Masvidal before Kiesa, I didn't feel Masvidal was an outsized person. I don't feel McGregor is an outsized person. I don't feel Maya is. What I'm saying outsized is, is four to five, six inches of reach. Uh, What I'm saying outsized now matches, you know, 10-year difference. How about six? How about five? Shit, can we get a guy in his mid-30s? Like, what's going on? Can we can we not slaughter Diego on national, like on ESPN in his home fucking town, and nobody thinks this is rude? Nobody's bringing attention to the five minutes that Piera Piera is being booed for getting a championship fucking walkout, man. And nobody told us, hey, um, you you get to do something special, you know, like, hey, do whatever. Nobody said nothing. And you notice we just walk out. Like, what's going on here? So clearly everything's been set up for Piera to kill Diego on national television, like on television. Like, it's crazy. And nobody's like, yeah, dude, that was crazy, unfair. And somehow Diego survived that onslaught. But his coach, he's cornering is weird and strange from a guy that doesn't fucking know Diego. Never really spent time with Diego. Diego will tell you he doesn't know that Whitman character. So now here's a guy on the live, on the broadcast, clouding off of a Hall of Famer, taking his moment. You see now what's really going on, my friend. And on top of it, why is the community going to bully me, but yet nobody's offered to help Diego? I don't, see, I don't see 10 physical therapists to replace me. I don't see a nutritionist company coming. I don't see any trainers. I don't see, like, yeah, you can say, oh, my doors are open. You can come fly your ass to my gym with, with, and leave your kid, but I'm here customizing and tailoring it to fit into his life so he still has a life. This is why Diego looks the freshest and does the most in all the stuff. So your argument of saying Diego should cut weight is really, why isn't there a 165? Asking that man to go to where it is is denying the fact that there's not a 165. So there's no space for him to go down because that is unhealthy. Diego over, oh, you know, goes a little overboard talking about what he walks around at. That's bullshit. Season Diego's 188, 190. All right. He blows up. You've seen him butterball. All right. So we do a slow lean out, a progressive thing throughout the camp so that his, his system isn't shocked because he is 38. Now, how come you guys are not acknowledging how well Diego is speaking? how much more he's able to do, why he's able to have these long interviews. Like, he's doing more than most people. And if you go look at, we went to the UFC PI, so the UFC knows we were at the PI training with Tristan Colony, 
How come they didn't mention that in the, in the story? Well, that might make Joshua Fabia look like a good coach. Yes, exactly. That would be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? Let's train with – come on. And then on top of it, I, was, I went all the way in the Philippines, saw Landslide, saw Mark Saggio of, of Team Lakai, and was out there recruiting to see if I can get Diego Strike Camp out there. At Team Lakai. But I'm a joke, man. That's the, that's the image that is out there. Tell me what other coaches are doing that. I took them – hold on, hold on. On top of it, I took them to the Middle East, had them training with world-class competitors over there. But I'm a joke, man. Yeah, yeah, that would be an obvious uh, – that was what I said. But also, you're not in the situation that we're in where it's an it, it's a, it's a in-between contract situation. And so we're under a different type of pressure, you know? The attitude in the air is there like, oh, well, the, the, the contract resign is there if you take this fight and, and, and the pressure's on, it's hometown, and let's, oh, we'll do that. You know, like, that's why. That's why. It wasn't like they were giving us any options when Pettis already called them out. Mai already called them out. They never offered us any of that. They aren't offering us an actual fight that anybody would see any of the things that I've taught Diego. No, you got him with monsters, man. And he still pulled off two out of three. And to be honest with you, Chiesa was a master level of defense too. Chiesa tried his hardest. He can finish people, okay? He got Diego in four or five dangerous spots. Diego escaped. Come on now. Why is nobody talking about that? Like, say what you see correctly without the bias. And if you actually say that, I don't turn out to – seem so crazy i don't seem now to be the the weirdo voodoo corner man like maybe take a look man at what i've actually done in the world take a look at how many verified pros and other real athletes i mean even in the middle east in jordan i was just out there i just posted a video just to show everybody even though it's not your business man of me working with jara uh the the welterweight champion of brave and Sammy, his, his coach. So don't act like I don't know how to build a team. I got a fucking worldwide team. You guys just act like I got to go to one place instead of giving Diego culture, education, wisdom, the things that happen in all the, the other spaces. You guys are really hot on the white and the black. You're talking to somebody that's a master of the gray. You don't even see what I'm doing.